Storm Clouds. At breakfast, Brig finished his eggs quickly, and after a moment, Cat noticed that he was staring at her. What? Cat demanded, her mouth full. Why don't you go fishing again today? Brig suggested. Cat swallowed and said, Really? You mean like the whole day? Sure, catch some good stuff. I can do that. Cat tried and failed to hide her excitement. She was grinning ear to ear. He really was going to let her be on her own. He really did trust her to stay out of trouble. I don't know which part of the docks I'll be working today, Breed continued. If anyone gives you trouble, don't go hunting for me. Just run back here and tell old Grandel. Cat frowned at this, but she knew it was good advice. Grandel didn't like her, and she didn't like Grandel. But as far as grown-ups go, Grandel was safe. And it was only in case of an emergency. It wasn't like Grandel would be watching her. She would certainly never agree to that. Anyway, it was just a backup plan. Okay, Cat agreed. I'll stay out of trouble. Brig tousled her hair, making her retie her headscarf. And he departed for work. Cat cleared their plates to the kitchen and went back upstairs for the tackle box. Skipping out into the street, Cat was elated. She had spent the day on her own plenty of times, but what made today special was that as far as she could remember, this was the first time she was doing it legitimately. No sneaking away, no lying about what she was doing. She already knew she could take care of herself. But today, Brig had endorsed that fact. Carrying her tackle box, Cat wandered up into the docks and found an empty berth meant for a large ship. She baited her hook with some scraps from breakfast and dropped the line into the water. The water was clear, and she could see a few small soft-nosed sharks preying on the tiny schools of colorful fish that teemed around the pylons. The sharks would be a good catch, and they were small enough that she was pretty sure she could drag one up, if it would just bite. Cat wrapped her line a few times around a bollard and sat back and enjoyed the morning sun. The docks were relatively busy this morning. People were coming and going. Most of the fishing boats had already departed before sunrise, but there were a lot of big ships moored amongst the floor <clears throat> moored. Amongst the forest of masts, she could see the flags of royal warships, a few foreign warships, and a lot of black flags on all sorts of pirate ships. The rest were merchant ships. Cat knew that in Srapa, that was just what the sneakier kind of pirate called themselves. After a while, Cat's eyes wandered out to sea. There were some big storm clouds building on the horizon but it was still beautiful and sunny on the shore. Cat leaned over and gazed into the water. The soft-nosed sharks were still down there, but they didn't seem very interested in a bit of soggy bacon on a rusty hook. There were too many fresher things for them to eat. Suddenly, the prospect of fishing all day long felt less appealing. She was still thrilled to be on her own, but surely there were some other things she could do with a whole day ahead of her. She looked at the distant thunderclouds again. Movement caught her eye on the breakwater. She could see the silhouettes of shovel crabs crawling around where the stone slabs of the breakwater met the shore. She could try to catch one of those. She had watched grown-ups do it before. It didn't look hard. They would use two spears, First, they would jab at the crab with one, and it would seize the shaft with its big claw. Then they would jab with the other spear, and the stupid crab would bite it. Then they would just keep pushing the spear down the crab's mouth, avoiding the hard shell and piercing its soft insides. When the crab was dead, they would let go of the first spear. Cat pulled up her line. She detached the bit of bacon and flung it into the water. Take it, picky sharks, she called, no string attached. After returning the tackle box to the room, Cat walked along the shore towards the breakwater.